Then we start with the revision of the chapter indigo. And as we have discussed earlier also, that this chapter, it is a story of struggle. It is a story of realizing that if you have the courage to stand up against what is wrong, you can bring about a change. Now here in this chapter, we have, who is the person here? Who was instrumental? He was Rajkumar Shukla. And Rajkumar Shukla was an illiterate, poor peasant who had been you know, exploited by the landlords. And because of an ancient system which had started so many years ago, they were still suffering because of that. So one person had the courage to stand up and raise his voice. And this all voice, it started the beginning of a very important or you can see a revolutionary movement, which ultimately led to what? Yes, the struggle for independence, right? So what is this chapter? Yes, we are going to discuss about what was the system there, how Mahatma Gandhi came on the scene, what was the argument between the sharecroppers and the peasants, right? And yes, so how Gandhi came and tried to sort out things, right? So it was that this incident, it was a turning point, not only for the peasants, but also for the life of Mahatma Gandhi. Because before that, he had never worked so closely with the peasants. He did not realize what the working conditions were. And so he came for a few months to Champaran, right? He thought that, okay, this is a very small matter, I'll sort it out and then I'll go back. But he ended up staying for a long, long time. And it was not only, you can say something which was a political struggle, you know, but it was, uh, more than that, it was more than that because Mahatma Gandhi, he did not only work for the rights of these people, but he also brought about many changes, changes in their social life, changes in their culture, right? Making them realize that they are as important as anybody else. Now, how did this story start? How did this story start? It was, you know, like how it began in 1917. This story, it began here. And this was when Gandhi's struggle for independence. Before that, we have read about his work in South Africa, how he worked the liberation of the farmers over there also, how he became involved in the movement. So when he came here, yes, so he did not get that opportunity as such to work for the peasants. But this instant at Champaran, it opened, you know, you can say maybe it was a stepping stone. Maybe it was there an opportunity for him to work for the peasants and of course, thereby his countrymen. Now, how did it start? What was it? It was that, do you want me to read the chapter again? Do you want me to read the chapter again? We should revise it. I think it's going to be the same thing. If I read it also, revise it also. It is going to take the same amount of time because this is a very, very important chapter. Important in the sense, he, once again, you know, where there are facts, there are bound to be confusion. Okay, so we'll just uh, hurriedly read it and then I'll just uh, discuss all the things with you all. Now, when I first visited Gandhi in 1942 at his ashram in Sevagram in central India, he said, I will tell you how it happened that I decided to urge the departure of the British it was in 1917. Now this chapter, it is written by Louis Fisher. He was greatly impressed by Mahatma Gandhi and his working method, right? His satyagraha, his non-violence, and of course, how he was able to get all the people together, right? So this was his meeting with him. And now Gandhi is telling about that how he started with this struggle for independence in so 1917. He had gone to the December 1916 annual convention of the Indian National Congress Party in Lucknow. There were 2,301 delegates and many visitors. 
During the proceedings, Gandhi recounted, a peasant came up to me, looking like any other peasant in India, poor and emaciated, and said, I am Rajkumar Shukla. I am from Champaran, and I want you to come to my district. Gandhi had never heard of the place. It was in the foothills of the towering Himalayas near the kingdom of Nepal. So here Gandhi had gone to Lucknow for a convention meeting, right, of all the leaders, of all the people there, so many delegates. And when he was, you know, like over there, a peasant came to him, looking like any other ordinary peasant. Once again, appearances. It is not your appearance that matter. It is your courage that matter. It's your thoughts that matter. It is your strength that, that matters, okay? So Rajkumar Shukla was like any other ordinary peasant and he went to Mahatma Gandhi. He said, I am from Champaran and I want you to come and help my people. And Gandhi had never heard of Champaran before, right? And yes, he came to know that it's a small area, you know, like a place there near the, what, uh, the Nepal, right? You know that? Okay, so towards that uh, place, this uh, was there, Jamparan was there, right? Now, under the ancient arrangement, the Jamparan presence were sharecroppers. They were not the owners of the land. They were working for the landlords. Rajkumar Shukla was one of them. He was illiterate but resolute. See, he was determined that I want a solution for this problem because the peasants were suffering a lot. Or is time pe bought zada problem ho rahi. That is why he felt I have to meet someone. And because he had heard about Mahatma Gandhi, that he has done so, so much of work and someone had say, suggested his name. So look at his courage, immediately went to him. He said, if he can do something for us. Resolute means determined. He had come to the Congress session to complain about the injustice of the landlord system in Bihar. And somebody had probably said, speak to Gandhi. So he, he had heard there's a convention going on, all the leaders would be coming. He came to Lucknow from Champaran, right? And when he came over here, he wanted to meet. And uh, one of them said, you speak to Gandhi because he's someone who can work for you. Gandhi told Shukla he had an appointment in Kanpur. This is Kanpur. And he also, was also a committed to go to other parts of India. Shukla accompanied him everywhere. So he was so determined, I am not letting you leave. I will not let you go. You will be coming with me. I'm going to take you to Champaran. So he went with him everywhere. Then Gandhi returned to his ashram near Ahmedabad. Shukla followed him to the ashram. For weeks, he le never left Gandhi's side. He said, Did you come. He was resolute. Resolute means determined. Illiterate he was, but he, was, he had a lot of courage. Right? Fix a date, he begged. Impressed by the share cropper's tenacity, and Gandhi said, I have to be in Kolkata and on such and such a date, come and meet me and take me from there. So Gandhi, you know, like he said, okay, fine. I'm coming to Kolkata. I have some work over there and you meet me over there. So he thought that maybe this man would forget. He might not turn up. Months passed. Shukla was sitting on his haunches in the appointed spot in Kolkata when Gandhi arrived. He waited till Gandhi was free. Then the two of them boarded a train for the city of Patna in Bihar. So they're from Kolkata, they're going to Patna. And Gandhi was very surprised to see the peasant over there. He thought, no, he's forgotten, he will not turn up. But when you are in a problem, you want a solution, you have to be determined enough. You cannot give up your courage, okay? So she, he has, uh, you know, like waited for him so long and after so many months, he was there. There, Shukla led him to the house of a lawyer named Rajendra Prasad, who later became the president of the Congress Party and of India. So from there, when they went to Patna, they went to Rajendra Prasad's house, right? And he was the president of India later on. Rajendra Prasad was out of town, but the servants knew Shukla as the poor yeoman who pestered their master to help the indigo share proper. See, so Rajkumar Shukla, it's not that he's gone to Gandhi. He's meeting the local people also. 
he met rajendra prasad so he was quite popular everybody knew him over there that is why he went there with great confidence i'll take you to rajendra prasad but rajendra prasad was not there okay so they let him stay on the grounds with his companion gandhi whom they took to be another peasant because of gandhi's appearance because of the simple dressing they thought he's also another peasant but gandhi was not permitted to draw water from the well less some drops from his bucket pollute the entire source how did they know that he was not an untouchable so this was a practice you know untouchable people they were not allowed to draw water from the common well because they felt they would pollute them they could not even go to the other region areas also so it was there you know a practice that was in our country very uh, what you can say sad practice and uh, the people over there they thought gandhi has come with a peasant so he is also like one of him they did not want him to share the water or spoil the water okay right so who is rajkumar shukla he is a peasant where has he come from champaran where did he go to lucknow why did he go to lucknow because he wanted someone to solve his problem okay then someone suggested that you speak to gandhi was gandhi able to meet him immediately or go with him immediately no where did he go with gandhi he went to all the places right he went to all that yes and uh, right later on he went to ahmedabad where gandhi suggested that i will give you a date and you meet me after yeah, on this particular date and time so rajkumar shukla was there now where have they gone they've gone to patna to meet rajendra prasad did they meet him no why was rajkumar shukla allowed to stay with him because everybody knew him okay right is this clear but gandhi nobody knew gandhi as such a you know like as a lawyer or a leader but here the peasants were not aware of him okay right so he was treated just like the peasant gandhi decided to go first to muzaffarpur which was on route to champaran to obtain more complete information about conditions than rajkumar shukla was about to give right so uh, he thought that rajkumar shukla does not know the complete picture so before going to champaran he went to muzaffarpur where he could get the complete information so wahan pe he must have met the he wanted to meet the administration talk about what is the situation he accordingly sent a tel telegram to professor j b triplani of the arts college in muzaffarpur whom he had seen at the gorz shanti niketan school the train arrived at midnight 15th april 1970 kriplani was waiting at the station with a large body of students so gandhi had you know like he knew people over there and the lawyers were there professors were there so many people he was aware of so he's written a letter i'm going to muzaffarpur first then i'll go to champaran right so let me find out what is the real scenario let us find out the legal aspects of it and kriplani was there kriplani was waiting at the station with a large body of students gandhi stayed there for two days in the home of professor malkani a teacher in a government school it was an extraordinary thing in those days gandhi commented for a government professor to harbor a man like me in smaller localities the indians were afraid to show sympathy for advocates of home rule home rule was one of the demands of the parties of that time that we want to rule our country who was against it the britishers were against it and in case anybody showed their support right to the leaders there who were participating then the government would take action against him so no one was, was ready to show their support the news of gandhi's advent and the nature of his mission spread quickly through muzaffarpur and to champaran shay croppers from champaran began arriving on foot and by conveyance to their see their champion now this is very very important has gandhi reached champaran no where is he muzaffarpur right why did he go to muzaffarpur because he wanted to collect information 
Now, when he reached there, there is news immediately spread among the peasants that someone has come, who's finding about information, who's come to work for us. Then what happened? Sharecroppers from Champaran began arriving on foot and by conveyance to see the champion. He's not done anything for them as yet, but he is their champion. How has he become a champion? Why is he a champion? Because he has shown support to their cause. Jitne salos the system tha, the peasants were suffering because of it. Nobody had raised a voice for, against it. So there are two people. One was Rajkumar Shukla, second, Mahatma Gandhi. So whenever we talk about the struggle of the peasants, we will always talk about Rajkumar Shukla. Thike? So has he reached Champaran? No. But the farmers from all the places have come to Muzaffarpur. Muzaffarpur lawyers called on Gandhi to brief him. They frequently represented peasant groups in court. They told him about the cases and reported the size of the fee. Lawyers also came to meet Gandhi. Yeah, we'll support, we'll fight for your cause. But what did they also say? The fee. And the fee was quite a big amount, right? Now, yes, do you think Gandhi is going to support the lawyers? He's going to allow them to represent his case. So he's not going to pay such a big amount of fee. Gandhi chided the lawyers for collecting big fee from the sharecroppers. He was angry with them. He was there. But why are you taking so much of fee from the sharecroppers? He said, I have come to the conclusion that we should stop going to law courts. Taking such cases to the courts does little good. Where the peasants are so crushed and fear-stricken, law courts are useless. The real relief for them is to be free from fear. Very, very important lines. Gandhi was angry at the lawyers. He said, why are you charging such amount of fee? Right? And yes, yeah, so when you are there creating so much of fear in the mind of the people, will people go to law? Will they go? No. Well, they know I have to pay so much of money and the lawyers are there to scare me. The lawyers are there making me even more worried. So he's saying such courts are not useful. Do you think the scenario is the same? Do you think anything has changed? Right? So people do go to the courts. People do go to get themselves heard. But will they, you know, like, of course, what about the situation there? What about the scenario there? How long does it take for them to get justice? So he's saying, if you charge so much, how will the people come for you, to you? And how can a sharecropper afford to pay such a big fee, right? So most important, yes, the main fear, uh, the thing is, the real relief for them is to be free from fear. Most of the arable land in the Champaran district was divided into large estates owned by Englishmen and worked by Indian tenants. This we know. So in that place, this was a system everywhere. So who were the landlords? Englishmen. Who were working for them? The Indian peasants. The chief commercial crop was indigo. Indigo was a crop that was mainly grown for selling. It was not, you know, like for the consumption or for the, you know, like uh, the peasants or the landlords, this was for sale. So it was for money only. The landlord compelled all tenants to plant three twentieths of 15% of their holdings with indigo and surrender the entire indigo harvest as rent. This was done by long-term contract. Now look at it here. What was the chief commercial crop? Indigo. Who asked the tenants to grow indigo? The landlords, right? And it was from a long time the system was done. How much of the land? Irrespective. Bada land hai, chota hai, whatever it is, 15% of their land, right? They had to grow indigo. And yes, so see so much of effort they had to put and the land is occupied with that indigo. Did they get anything in return? No. What did they have to do? They had to give all the crop to the landlord as rent. Okay. And actually it was a commercial crop. The farmer would definitely benefit from it. Now, what is the situation now? 
Presently, the landlord learned that Germany had developed synthetic indigo. This was the major thing that triggered this whole thing. Pele kya thi natural indigo? They growing in their fields. Ab Germany me kya aagiye? Synthetic indigo. Synthetic indigo is what? Is it man-made? No, it is not. So naturally, it is going to be produced more, and it is going to be much cheaper. When you have something cheaper. Are people going to buy something that is expensive? They're not. They thereupon obtained agreements from the sharecroppers to pay them compensation for being released from the 15% arrangement. In both ways, the landlords were going to benefit. When commercial crop indigo grow karein, kis ko mil raha? Landlord ko. Now what is the landlord saying? You want to be free from the system, you pay us. You don't want to grow indigo, you pay us, right? And of course, even they're not going to be in a loss. How is the sharecropper going to get so much of money to pay as compensation? Clear? Is this clear to you? What is the sharecropping arrangement? What is the sharecropping arrangement? So the landlords had asked the peasants to grow how much? Yes, so 15%. So now earlier 15% was what? Indigo. Now what are they saying? 15% pay as compensation. So if you want to be released from the system, pay us. Now this is the whole deadlock which is happening between the lawyers and the landlords, or rather the sharecroppers and the landlords. The lawyers are there. In, in fact, not helping them out, they're creating more and more fear. Okay? The sharecropping arrangement was irksome to the peasants. The peasants were not happy with this. It's not now, but from a long time. And many signed willingly. They signed, and they did not know why this is happening. Those who resisted engaged lawyers, the landlords hired thugs. So if they had land lawyers, the landlords had thugs who would force them that you better sign and you give us money to be released from the system. Meanwhile, the information about synthetic indigo reached the illiterate peasants who had signed and they wanted the money back. So illiterate peasants later on they came to know that they are asking money from us. Why? So that they are in no loss anyway. Because what is going to happen with the crop? No, it, they, it won't fetch them money. They don't want to suffer a loss. They are asking us to pay that money as rent, as compensation, to be released from the system. The farmers they came to know, now they're saying, give us our money back. The money which we had given to the lawyers right to be released from the system but like why should we pay for a crop which you don't want why should we grow a crop which you don't want isn't it right so this is the situation here okay let's look at the questions here list the places that gandhi visited between the first meeting with shukla and his arrival at champaran yes so there are so many places mentioned over there or not can you uh, name them Yes, Kanpur. Yes, went to Kolkata, he went to Ahmedabad, right? Then they went to Muzaffarpur. Has Mahatma Gandhi reached Champaran as yet? Abhi tak Champaran nahi hai. Where is he? Went to Patna, then he went to Muzaffarpur. Okay. Now, what did the peasants pay the British landlords as rent? Pele kya dete the rent? Was it money or was it a crop? Which crop? Indigo, very good. Now, what did the British now want instead and why? What did they want now? They're saying, no, we, we don't want the crop, you pay us compensation, right? And yes, we'll release you from this system. What would be the impact of synthetic indigo on the prices of natural indigo? They will reduce, naturally there's more indigo in the market, and it is going to affect the 
natural indigo so you people know better than me all uh, your economic students and all now at this point gandhi arrived in champaran so this was a struggle which was going on this was the tussle which was going on between the lawyers and the sharecroppers and the landlords and now mahatma gandhi has arrived on the scene he began by trying to get the facts first he visited the secretary of the british landlords association the secretary told him that they could give no information to an outsider gandhi answered that he is no outsider so he is there right and he wants to get information so he's gone to this the secretary there he's gone to the british landlords association he wants information they say we don't give and how can you tell a citizen of this country that you are an outsider next gandhi called on the british official commissioner of the tirhut division in which the champaran district lay the commissioner gandhi reports proceeded to bully me and advised me forthwith to leave tirhut so did the officials cooperate with gandhi when he wanted information no so one said go away you're an outsider we're not giving information to outsider the other tried to bully him and leave this place okay gandhi did not leave instead he proceeded to motihari the capital of champaran so the little states were there and later on yes so they have all combined then several layer, lawyers sorry accompanied him at the railway station a vast multitude greeted gandhi he went to a house and using it as headquarters continued his investigations a report came in that a peasant had been maltreated in a nearby village so gandhi has started his investigation the peasants are accompanying him where is he gone now he's gone to motihari the official said no we're not cooperating with you he did not stop so from champara now where is he gone to motihari okay or when he was there what news did he get that some peasant has been treated badly gandhi decided to go and see the next morning he started out on the back of an elephant so he went there riding an elephant okay he had not proceeded far when the police superintendent's messenger overtook him and ordered him to return to town in his carriage gandhi complied the messenger drove gandhi home where he served him with an official notice to quit champaran immediately gandhi signed a receipt for the notice and wrote on it that he would disobey the order is this clear yes so what has happened gandhi has gone to motihari he started his investigation news came a peasant has been maltreated so gandhi decided let me go and see the peasant what has happened he started out then he got a messenger stopped him and gave him what well, he said you have to go back home he said fine i'm going back home but when he reached home there was an order that please we leave champaran immediately gandhi he took that but he said i will not leave champaran okay right is it clear to here all of you is it clear so we will i think so continue tomorrow the period is also coming to an end so what will happen when gandhi will uh, disobey the court will have to appear in court isn't it